All right. <clears throat> so let's continue on to deal with title work. <clears throat> Excuse me. And talk a little bit about one of my favorite subjects and one that is very, once again, confusing to a lot of people who I think honestly have the wrong answer uh, when it comes to ordering title work. So when should you order title work? Well, there are technically two times that you can order title work. So let's look at them. The first one is when we do this thing here and we get a listing, a lot of agents will go ahead and order the title work here and call it a TBD, or sometimes you also hear it called a preliminary. And that's because we don't know who the buyer is yet. So then time goes along and we get an offer and then the offer says they're going to close. And this time frame here, they would pull title work again. That is called a bring down. And they're thinking about they're bringing down the date from the time they did it the first time to the day of closing. That is one method in which the title work can be ordered. Now there is a second method in which you list the property and then you get an offer and you wait till you get the offer before you order the title work because now we know who the buyer is so they can check that and then they close right here. This time frame, by the way, is also called a bring down just like this one was only it's a shorter time frame. They bring it down from the day that they first ordered it, which was the offer to the closing date. So what you have are two ways to order title company. Now I will tell you that there are problems with some of these or both of these. And the first problem is if you order title work here, the day you list it, there is this misconceived fear that the buyer is going to come in and direct where the title work goes and it gets pulled away from the title company that you order. Let's say you order from title company A and they want to go with title company B. And that is the big conceptional fear that we have that when the buyer comes in that they're then going to end up going to company B which ends up do doing it this way, by the way, because they would be, would now be just retained right here. So they would order it back this way and the bring down here. All right. Now there is a problem with that, obviously, as you can see, because after a while, company A may come to you and go, Hey, Raymond, we've ordered title work three or four times and blah, 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 blah. We need to really make sure we close one. The second way that we do it is like this. Now, the problem with this is this whole time that you're listing it right here, you are going or based uh, your assumption that your client, seller client, has actually told you the true amount of their mortgage. Oh, let's list it for 109139 because I owe 100. So you list it, you get an offer, and you get that offer for the number we just mentioned, 109, and you pull the title work, and you find out that this guy's number wasn't what he actually owed. He actually owed 104 because he had late fees and lawyer fees and all of that. Now the 109 offer you just took probably won't clear that 105 by the time you pay the, the realtor fee and you pay the closing costs. You are not going to have enough money to clear that 104 and now you've got a problem. So you don't really want to do it this way either. So most people say, well, let's do it this way. This seems to be the least worst of all of them, but we still have this problem of the buyer chain pulling the title company from us, right? That's one of the questions that we always have. 
section 9 of RESPA. Well, that didn't work. Section 9 of RESPA. There. Says something about, and that's where people get carried away. It's like, well, something about the negotiation of the title company or the title work is illegal. I am here to tell you that is entirely false. That's not what Re Section 9 of RESPA says. Section 9 of RESPA says that a seller cannot force the buyer to purchase directly or indirectly any settlement service picked by the seller. All right, so there's a couple things in here I want to talk about. The first one is this. All right. The prohibition hinges whether or not that the buyer is actually required to pay for the title insurance. So in essence, if the seller is paying for all of the title insurance, it is most certainly possible for the seller to require the buyer to use a specific title company. There is no violation in that. This has been tried and HUD has already given their answer to this. If the seller is paying for both sides of the title work, that is not a violation because the violation comes in the fact is if you are requiring the seller, or I'm sorry, in this book, requiring the buyer to pay for, all right? The second one, and this is what I was talking about, it's directly or indirectly. So you can't say, I will pay for all of the title work and then somewhere else in the closing have some kind of hidden fee that the buyer then pays to balance out the equation um, and you've seen buyer credits and seller credits uh, listed before. So you can't do it that way. That's sneaky. You can't say, well, I'll pay for it and then back charge the buyer in some other fee on the settlement statement. The third one is this. If you say you must purchase from this title company or I will not sell to you, there is a violation. So unless you say that, there probably is unlikely a violation. So you literally can negotiate the title company as long as you don't get to the point where it becomes this. If it's the only thing you're arguing and you're arguing back and forth about just the title company, and you're not paying for it all as the seller, that would be the violation. So if your buyer says, I want to use title company B, you can actually counter back the price and use title company A. Now, if the buyer says, I want you to pay closing costs and you're paying the fee, then you most certainly can say, nope, we're going to use uh, title company A because I'm not forcing you to pay for it. I'm paying for it. Now, there is this other term in here HUD has made a decision on already is that if the buyer is economically penalized for not using your title company, that is not a violation either. So what I'm saying here is if you go out and you pay your lender's policy and the, I'm sorry, the owner's policy as the seller, and let's say it's that much. And then they're going to write a simultaneous policy to the buyer for 125 under your title company. And the buyer says, well, I want to go use title company B. You also have the right to go, you know what? I'm going to stick with title company A and if you want to go and use your title company, then you most certainly can. But there, 
you are not getting this simultaneous policy benefit, your policy there may be $450 by going to B. There are some people that have tr tried in court cases to go, well, it's 450 here and only 125 there, so I am economically being penalized for choosing this. So am I indirectly being forced to use A if I want to get that benefit? HUD has come back and said, this is not a violation. So the fact that they have to pay more money by using their title company is not a violation. So what I'm telling you is, even if B or the buyer wants to use title company B, you can still stick with A and they can have title company B. It is possible to close with two title companies. The only difference is this policy right here Usually you get an economic benefit for the simultaneous policy if you're sticking with one title company. If you go to a second title company, they are not going to give you the benefit of the simultaneous policy, so it will be at the full face value. That is not a violation because they're considering that an economic burden, all right? So, as long as you are not requiring them by saying, I will not sell to you unless you use A, which I don't think anybody in the world would ever do that, that's not a violation. If A, if the seller's paying for it all, then it doesn't matter. And that's not a violation if the seller says we want to use A as well, okay? Now, remember, we've touched on this thing already. We've already talked about it one time. We can novate the closing. Novate is the legal term to change or amend, and you would do that through the amendment. That is how you would change the closing date. And as long as both parties agreed to that, then it's not a problem. And I have said this many times, and we're going to beat the horse one more time. As long as both parties agree, the contract can be changed at any time for any reason, as long as both parties agree. So it can be amended or novated to reflect a different closing date. And you might have to do that... <clears throat> If you remember, we had that time is of the essence clause. <clears throat> Can't go beyond that. So in order to stay inside of time is of the essence date, we would move the date. And we can do that as long as both parties agree. Okay? No problem. Hold on. <clears throat>